right, and here we are for session here number two. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing well. Awesome. We're, How about you? I'm doing fantastic. Great. I'm doing very well. It's great to have you here. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. So just in case everybody's wondering, we have Lauren Waters here. Hi guys. And she will be joining us for the next two hours on Adobe XD. That's right. Uh, I'm Mark Risen. I'll be hosting and uh, just watching all the magical pixels take place for the next two hours. Um, so for those of you that are joining us in the chat, definitely make sure to ask us questions. Hey Cedric, Yavi. Thank you for saying hi. Uh, let us know where you're from. Drop some emojis, maybe your favorite animal, maybe an elephant or two. Could be kind of cool. Um, so just a couple quick things. We're definitely giving away a, a gift card today for Moo. So for those of you that are in the chat feed, we'll be giving away a $30 gift card for Moo Ooh, for all your business professional cool. needs. And, um, and then we also have a challenge. You can access the challenge in the challenge tab. And in that, it will give you all of these specifics. Uh, I think we're doing a challenge on a music playlist today, and oh, we've awesome. also provided a template. So just click the challenge tab, access the information. Um, we've got a great new way to kind of view everybody's work as it's in progress on Behance, which is gonna be fantastic. So we'll do that later on in the session. But first, Lauren, I'd love to hear a little bit more hey, about I you. I see some of my app screens behind me. Oh, awesome. <laughs> So my name is Lauren Waters and I'm a UI UX designer, obviously. I, um, I started as a visual designer, but then I eventually took the path into UX design. I feel like um, that's bound to happen because visual design crosses over a lot with UX design. Um, I'm loving it. Hi, Ava. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's where I'm at now. I'm currently in San Diego and uh, still doing user experience design, and I'm so excited to be here. Awesome, can you share a little bit about how that journey was from going from visual into UX? Sure. Um, so I actually studied graphic design in college. Mm -hmm. I went to San Diego State, and my major was multimedia, so that kind of um, let me delve into all the different areas of design. And then I figured out that I liked visual design the best and um, web design as well. And so from there, I just, I got my first job out of college as a visual designer and it was all web-based and I loved it. And I just continued on from there. Awesome, that's great. And that's that's probably fairly common for people that, you know, are pursuing art degrees or digital backgrounds yes. going into visual um, UX. I've definitely seen the lines kind of blur um, oh, for over the sure. past Definitely. over the past five years, in regards to whether you're only focused in visual design or UX, um, sometimes I see them classified as superpowers. Where you might be a UX designer, but you might have a superpower in visual design, where your mm -hmm. visual design is very very strong. Yep. Um, so that's awesome, and thank you for sharing. Of course. Uh, hi, Darren. Thanks for joining us, Dana. Hi from Washington State, Pacific Northwest. Um, okay, so we've gone over some of the particulars. We're really excited to have you here. Um, and you. what do you do right now? I am a UI designer at an all online bank. Okay. And I have been helping redesign their on online banking platform. Awesome. Yeah. For and web and mobile. Okay. Outstanding. Yeah. You having a lot of fun? <laughs> I'm having a ton of fun. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay, cool. Well, Lauren, it's so great to have you here. We're really looking forward to, uh, to seeing your work. Um, I'm Mark Risen. I'm a local designer. Um, I work at a startup now called Matter. I've got a shirt on. Um, Ooh. And yeah, the website's called matter, matterapp.com um, for those of you that are curious to check it out. Uh, it's, it's been a fun journey. Um, one of the things that I've always said in any of the sessions here is always feedback's a gift. And so it's kind of cool now that I'm prioritizing work on a feedback tool. So I'm also equally excited about it. So. Excellent. Awesome. All right, so what do you have in store for us today? So today I'm going to be redesigning an organization's website that is very close to my heart. Um, it's called the David Sheldrick Wildlife Trust. Okay. And uh, is my screen sharing, or can I share my you screen? Can turn it on. So, uh oh. <laughs> Let's see if my internet's working. Is your internet working? It should be. Let me see. Well, basically, I'm going to be redesigning the a few pages of the desktop version of the David Sheldrick Wildlife Trust because their website um, is a little bit outdated. They do such great things, but I just wanted to create a more modern version of their website and also do 
a couple screens of the mobile app to go with it because they currently do not have a mobile app, so. Awesome, and just share a little bit about what your, your passion is in regards to wildlife or, or maybe David Sheldrick in particular. Sure. You did share that you really love uh, oh, yeah, elephants. Oh yeah, this is the website. <coughs> so if you go to the home page, actually. Sure. Yeah, so you can see here, it's definitely a little bit outdated, so I just wanted to put a new modern touch on it um, and definitely simplify it a lot because as you can see at the top, they have a lot of navigational links and I just wanted to maybe combine some of those and make it super simple when someone comes to easily foster an orphan, easily donate and just easily learn more in general about the organization. So um, that's what I'm gonna be do doing today. That's incredible, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, okay. So it sounds like this is a little bit of a passion project. I can definitely see what you're saying and maybe that the website's a little outdated. So I'm um, looking forward to see what we accomplish over the next few days. Um, sounds like other people love ele elephants. I mean, in the how group. could you not love elephants? <laughs> also, which is, <laughs> so yeah, I, I think I was sharing with you just prior, um, I spent some time in Chiang Mai yes. at the Elephant Sanctuary, which was um, incredible. It was basically like a day spa oh, for okay. the elephants where you go and you, kind of prepare banana snacks for them, and then we gave them baths, and then we made more snacks for them, Aww. and then we fed them again. And so the whole day just revolved around taking care of these elephants and That's feeding them. That's amazing. But yeah, it was, in, it was incredible. So That's amazing. I have yet to find a pink elephant. <laughs> so, awesome. Who's Paco? Paco's right here. Oh, Paco oh I'm our, so sorry. He's the main, he's the main we guy. We just met, so. <laughs> so. Awesome. Well, um, I was just testing to make sure you knew who I, it was. <laughs> yeah, we've got Paco and Gus. Everybody knows and loves these <laughs> these two in the background making all the magic happen. So uh, thank you guys for doing what you do. Um, awesome. Just before we start, does anybody have any quick, quick questions for Lauren? Anything about um, going from visual design to UX design? Please, please let us know. Please share. Um, Someone Tim, says, to can have you, you share a backstory on what the David Childrick Wildlife Trust does? Yeah. Okay, so basically what they do is they go out, they have a bunch of teams that go out and search for orphans that have been um, left alone because their mother or their parents have been either poached or you know something terrible like the ivory trade and they've the babies are left all alone and they are not old enough to survive on their own. So this organization takes them in and really um, just reintegrates them to hopefully go back into the wild and they take such good care of them. I mean, it's amazing. Like they will, the keepers um, will sleep in the actual stockades with the babies so that they feel comforted and they give them little blankets to wear so they're nice and warm. And it's, it's such a great organization. That's you guys incredible. should go check them out. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Hi, Michael. I was hoping to see you today. Hopefully you swing by later on. Um, <clears throat> Oscar says he has a question about tools. So we'll go ahead and get started. Anybody, if you have questions, um, I'll happily be able to help facilitate, answer questions, or pull Lauren in um, as, sure. uh, as we need. Uh, really excited to, to see how the day progress. Again, thank you so much for being here. Um, it's thank really you. awesome to have you yeah. here. And uh, let's do it. All right, let's do it. So I am first going to start with the home page, like what we just saw. And um, I'm just gonna start with basic wireframes. So I'm gonna take the rectangle tool here and just kind of map out what I want on the page to begin with. Um, so here I'm gonna be doing the top navigation. Pretty standard having it up at the top here. <clears throat> and for anybody that's joining us, we're gonna be working on the David Sheldrick Wildlife Trust. Trust. Yes. And we're gonna be redesigning their website initially. Mm -hmm. And so right now we're currently starting to wireframe out um, what that potential website will, will look and feel like. Yep. And then we'll also be moving into uh, mobile or responsive designs. Yes. Uh, for these as well. For the mobile app. Awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead and check what grid I have here. It looks like looks like something I can work with. So I'm gonna leave that. Just a couple questions. Um, some people had asked, you know, what do you rec what would what would you recommend in transitioning from uh, visual design into UX design? Uh, 
curious to have your thoughts. Yeah. Um, well, for me, I'm kind of a self-taught UI UX designer, and I just, just from the path I went in my career, um, I had a lot of overlap in my, in my job. So I learned that way, just being in the environment, doing it um, right at my job. And I've, I've watched a good amount of tutorials. Uh, I highly recommend that. And just reading articles, expanding your knowledge as much as you can. Um, you know, I don't think you necessarily need classes. That's great if you want to do classes, but just from being around people who do UX design and your coworkers, <coughs> just asking them questions, following along what they're doing in their projects has been really helpful for me. Yeah, awesome. Um, yeah, just to add to that, you know, I think I think one of the difference between visual design is you're you're heavily focused on aesthetics, composition, mm -hmm. proportion, contrast levels. I mean, you're you're all those become incorporated into a final design. I think in regards to uh, user experience, you want to move a little bit beyond the pixels, so you can think more in prototypes. You can think more in experiences, um, which XD does like a really really good job at uh, enabling that very quickly. Um, I think the biggest caveat or most important takeaway is being customer centric. Um, mm -hmm. Visual design often can be personal aesthetic taste, uh, whereas if you're doing user experience, you need to really sit down with customers and or users and really build an empathetic approach to what's going to help solve their pain points. Mm -hmm. um, and understanding that and then facilitating that through either research or questions or user studies, you name it, um, those are all going to be, you know, ways that you can start getting enabled into user experience design. And then Agnell, just to answer your question on the design system. Here um, we go with the repeat to, grid, by the way. To sketch, um, <laughs> you can definitely use the assets column in XD for that. Mm -hmm. I love this tool, the repeat grid. I'm sure everybody knows about it by now, but it's super convenient, saves a lot of time. Kiara asked, do you always start with wireframing right away? Yes, so I meant to mention that before, but I'm not, just for me personally, I'm not a big sketch person. Like I, I don't find it very useful for me to sketch out on a notepad or anything. So I feel the most comfortable just diving in and doing my wireframes in XD. Um, that's just what works for me. If you're into sketching, totally cool. Um, but yeah, that's just how I've always been. I, I don't know what it is, but um, I just find it more useful to go straight to XD for sketch for wireframes. Awesome. Thanks for asking the question, Kiara. It's it's <laughs> just do whatever you're comfortable with, you know. Um, I'm gonna make sure to do a nice big hero image here because. Who doesn't want a big image of an elephant, right? Full bleed. <laughs> Full bleed. And then right below the hero, I wanted to, they don't have this currently on their website, but I wanted to feature um, how many orphans they have saved, how many they have treated, and um, what was the last one? Oh, how many have been released back into the wild? I think that's a really cool. Uh, statistic that yeah, people that's should great. know. Really good validation yeah. for the impact they're having. Because they're big numbers. So I also love this feature um, where it shows you the cutoff line. I think it's really helpful because sometimes I just don't know where that is. <laughs> I'm just going to put rectangles for where the numbers are going to go for now. Oops. Yeah, I think oh, I think when it comes to sketching, um, it really <clears throat> can just be personal process. Yeah, absolutely. So Brian asked, do they require you to mock up these wireframes in HTML or CSS? Which wireframes? I think they're referring to the ones that uh, you're working on now. Oh. Meaning, is it part of your workflow to actually have to demonstrate in code? It is not. 
I um, I have basic knowledge about coding, but I'm I'm not definitely not a coder. So we're getting some elephant puns in the room. Oh, let's hear them. Uh, for this project, it's important not to truncate stuff. Uh, <laughs> that's great. Good stuff. Keep them coming, Jan. Yeah, keep them coming. <clears throat> I'm curious, when you um, start to design for desktop, what size screen do you design on? For me personally? Yes. Uh, so I, I generally start with um, 920, like 920 pixels, okay. and then I go to 1440, <clears throat> and then I go to 1920, and then I go all the way out to 3000. Oh, wow. And then I actually go as small to 375. So I try to, depending on, you know, especially for you, like when you're doing this full bleed, uh, image in the background. Mm -hmm. It's sometimes important to specify whether that's, you know, like CSS stretch or whether it stays in a fixed width or fixed position or fixed height. You know, does it stretch in one direction or not? So I try okay. to, the best way to communicate that um, is to demonstrate it in several screen sizes along mm -hmm. the way. Um, that way you can identify, you know, depending on if you're using a fluid grid or if you're using responsive components, um, you want to specify breakpoints. Yes, absolutely. But yeah, you know, 1280 is a good benchmark. Um, 1920 is good. They all vary. Yeah, tablets, 640 pixels, especially for vertical, is uh, can always be challenging. Generally, for Oscar, for that question, what I do is I try to, if I've already designed for mobile, I'll pull in the mobile assets in the, into the tablet. And then I only generally need to resize a couple elements um, just to make sure it works. I wish I had some Laura Mipsum to put here, but my internet's not working. It's okay. Oh, you're not getting anything, huh? I'm not getting anything. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I would be putting some Laura Mipsum here so I could see the paragraph. Um, so just visualize that. <laughs> Ying Chen asked if this project requires any UX research. You know, um, for me, I knew a decent amount about this organization, so I just took what I already knew. And the goal for me of this website was to, um, well, I think I said it earlier, but make it super simple because there are people like some of my aunts and uncles who are not tech savvy at all. and. Um, they just need the most simplified version of a website just to go straight from the homepage to what they want to do. And what they want to do is foster an orphan, donate, and learn more. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to have those very visible on the homepage um, because for this website, you have all age ranges, all um, technical level skills. So I just wanted to simplify it as much as I could. Mm. <clears throat> If you wanted to, you could just, uh, um, not I made a sele selection of just doing some dummy text, but if you just like button uh. mashed a bunch and then, <laughs> and then copy paste, copy paste, right. copy paste, Let's do that. might just uh, help out. <clears throat> That's generally what I uh, do. They should make Lauren Ipsum. They should do that. <laughs> Sorry. There might be that already. That could be. I mean,. Or bacon Ipsum. Bacon Ipsum. That a is one. a thing. And yep. hipster Ipsum. Hipster Ipsum. Yep. Okay. Thanks for the great suggestion. Oh, is that a suggestion? Yeah. Oh, perfect. Saving my life over here. And look at that. Look at that. So I knew that I wanted the two buttons under our mission to be Orphan's Project so that people could learn more about the mission and what the project does. And also about us. Awesome. <clears throat> so right up front in the homepage, they can find where they can learn more about the project and the organization in general. Great. And if anybody's just joining us, we're working on the David Sheldrick Wildlife Trust redesign for their landing page right now. And then we've got Lauren Waters, 
who's going to be spending the next couple of days with us, three days in total, doing the web and mobile design. Also, we have a, um, a giveaway where we're giving away a $30 gift certificate to Moo, which does business cards. I love Moo. I think other stations. Yeah, they were great. like the first company I ever used to create my own. Same. Wish I could pull up that first <laughs> business card design. I, I bet it was really special. <laughs> was it special? Know what it like. I'm sure it was terrible. <clears throat> but you thought it was really good at oh, the yeah. time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. Absolutely. I'm going to add a little bit of line height here because it's bothering me how much it's just like crammed way too much. I usually add about, for paragraphs, I add probably 10 pixels or so for line height. And I'm, I know I'm not supposed to be focusing on UI right now, but I can't help it. Well, I think it's, I think it's good too, because um, depending on how you, you know, because you're mocking these wireframes up digitally, how close you are in, in like actual pixelness could actually help determine how finished your design ends up being at the, mm -hmm. at the end, so. Okay, so there we have the first top of our page. Um, that was pretty quick. Was it? Just moving along. I'm not very used to um, working straight from the trackpad, so I usually have a mouse. Another main thing I wanted to feature on the home page, and they have this on their current home page too, is the newest orphan arrival. So every time they get a new orphan, they put a little picture of them and then a brief description about that orphan. And then I wanted a button like right front and center to be able to foster them if they want to. Once I get into the UI also, I would like um, a suggestion for a font to use. Mm. I want something definitely sans serif, but a little more playful looking because even though um, this organization is pretty serious and the orphans go through so much trauma when they're young, I wanted to focus on their progress instead of the really heavy backstory because they do make so much progress and they, once they've gone through um, a little reintegration, they come out so happy mm. and it's like they just get their life back. And I wanted to focus on that rather than the super heavy aspect of it. So I wanted this website to be a little more playful, um, yes. not to take away from their backstory, but just, you know, to keep it a little more lighthearted. That's awesome. So yeah, anybody let us know. <laughs> If you have any font suggestions, yeah. Kevin, Kevin su suggested Amaranth. I and no Kiara is telling me I'm supposed to get you a mouse. <laughs> so would you like us to actually? Hey. Get... <laughs> <laughs> we might we might have one that we can. Yeah. I mean, I'm okay for now. Are but, you sure? Um, yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll I can't work with without it. a mouse. I, I bring really? this like big clunky ergonomic <laughs> thing in. Yeah. Oh, okay. <clears throat> So, newest orphan arrival. I have a font that I'm using right now that's, I think, kind of similar to what you're describing. It's called Rubik. It's a, hmm. it's a Google font. Okay. And then we're getting some suggestions for Gotham or Campton. Gotham's a great classic clean font. Mm -hmm. Sands. Thanks, Joseph. Faison suggesting Leto. We're getting a lot of suggestions here. Okay, you better be taking mental oh, notes. Right. Got it. <laughs> Avenir. Avenir is a pretty classic one. Oh, I like Avenir. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> cool. So um, it looks like you're kind of blocking out the composition. You're working down the page. Um, you're thinking of kind of large large blocks of text mm -hmm. and then potentially large image 
images juxtaposed to the text. Yep. Yeah, I wanted to um, just break up the page a little bit, having images not so boxed in, like how you typically see on a lot of websites. Mm -hmm. um, that style works for a lot, but I just wanted to do something a little bit different this time, so. Can I use the gibberish again here? So for these, um, I'm just putting placeholders for like their name, their age on their arrival, um, their birthday, and just little facts like that go here. Awesome. Just helps you to connect to the elephant more and I should use repeat grid here, huh? I'm excited to see how the challenge turns out. There were some really nice submissions in Ooh, the yeah. um, in the last segment. And um, if you're joining us and you'd like to participate in the challenge that we're having, you can find the, uh, the details in the challenge tab in the chat window. And I think there's a template provided. Um, and then there's also a link out just to see what some of the other submissions look like. Uh, the prompt is for a uh, playlist for your favorite music app. That's gonna be really cool to see the submissions. Mm -hmm. I'm excited for that. Yeah, there's some great ones in there. I know this doesn't look very pretty right now because I don't have the text in here, but don't worry, you guys. It will look okay in the end. I think it looks pretty. So we have a question. <clears throat> What's our favorite part of the UX design process? Ooh. Um, does that include UI part of it sure. or just UX? Okay. Well, I, I really love UI design. Um, I like taking the wireframes and then making them all pretty. That's mm. my favorite part. Choosing colors and gradients and fonts and um, photos. That's the best part to me. Awesome. Yeah. Um, for me, Darren, I think my favorite part is honestly once you design something and you sit down with the customer to see like all the either like a silly mistakes that you've made or things that they've had you know magical delightful moments with i think that that's a, a really good um validator of the work that you've done and so um I f i'm a firm believer that most of the answers in your product experience lie within your customers and how you should be designing it and building it so it's always very enlightening to sit down and work with customers I would agree on that too. I've done a lot of uh, usability testing and it's really cool to sit down and see firsthand how they're interacting mm -hmm. with what you've designed yourself. Yeah, totally. So I would agree with that too. Hi, Tiffany. Thanks for joining us. So the next section I'm gonna do is a little bit of a photo gallery. Um, I wanted this website to have a lot of imagery on it because I feel like it really helps you connect with the elephants because you can see how happy they are with the progress they've made since they were so traumatized being found, um, having lost their mother or whatever it was. So I wanted to put focus on that too. And then I'm gonna add a little quote. Um, I'm not sure what quote yet, but I'm gonna put a box for a little inspiring quote. Awesome. So a question from Joseph. Uh, mm -hmm. Before you got into UX UI, which discipline of design did you enjoy the most? Which discipline of design? What yeah. does that mean? I, I had the same question. Joseph, let us know if you can clarify um, the question just a little bit more so we can help to answer it as best we can. Um, be really good and get this shot of me sipping in this water bottle. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, we got the chat to win coming up. And for for the prize, it is a thirty dollar gift card. Oh, that's right. for Moo.com mm -hmm. for you to get your first business cards designed. Oh man, here we go. And we're back. That's a new loading animation I haven't seen before. Oh, but cool. It's every single time I'm blown away. <laughs> Seriously, they are like amazing. No, it really is. Yeah. All right, oh, here we oh my God. Oh my gosh, it's, it's going so fast. <laughs> slow down. Can we get it a slow-mo like version went of light this? light speed. <clears throat> All righty. We have a winner. Would you like to announce the winner? Where's the winner? It's just over to your right. There you go. Oh, the yep. winner <laughs> is Aaron Fields, A.A. Ron. All right, A.A. Ron. <laughs> Way to go. Yay. You get a $30 gift card for Moo.com. Hey, that's a great, that's a great gift. It's, yeah, it's honestly like. I'd be very excited about that. Business cards are, uh, I mean, I don't have any right now, but I wish I did. So I'll have to get in on the next chat. Yeah, one. definitely. All well, right. congratulations, Aaron. I feel like we just teleported somewhere. Well, so. we did. <laughs> we did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we got some Key and Peele reference. Yes. Acknowledgement, which is good. Hopefully people knew what I was saying. So Tim's sharing that there's something special. I think Tim works, I'm pretty sure Tim works for Adobe, um, but Tim's okay. been dropping some, some hints here. So I think he's trying to get everybody to win something. Ooh. I know, I forget what my uh, first business card looked like to, as well. I would pay money to see that. I think mine was pretty minimal. Yeah. And looks like Tim has a link to share for moo.com slash Adobe Live. Robert said his card was pretty corny. I share the sentiment, Robert. I feel like mine probably was too. Mine definitely was. And I was probably so proud of it. Oh. <laughs> <clears throat> So um, I, there, there were some earlier questions just in regards to tools. Would you say XD is part of your, your workflow and something that you use regularly? Yeah, um, uh, XD is definitely in my workflow. I'm a little bit newer to XD, to be honest, but I have found it very useful and very um, efficient to use just because of the little, the little features it has. Um, and it's definitely, I think it's my favorite to prototype in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me yeah. it's the same. I was able to do some user tests where I was able to kind of button up some really quick um, links to like a, a landing page and things like that. And mm -hmm. it just made it that much easier <clears throat> for me to work that way and share a link and yep. and get that feedback so, so easily. Um, yeah, the prototyping part um, up in the top here is really awesome mm -hmm. too. For I sure. love that. Lucinda says, hi, Lauren. Hi, Lucinda. <laughs> These are all my coworkers. I'm glad they tuned in. Jason, for the website, I was redesigning matterapp.com. That's what, um, that's one of the first, most recent projects was. And I was kind of running some A and B tests is that mm -hmm. okay? It's the most recent thing I've done. Very cool. And you did it in XD. Uh, I used both XD and I used uh, Figma for the, okay. like some of the design, but yeah, XD. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, what is your favorite feature of XT? Mm. Other than repeat question. repeat grid, because I just use that incessantly to like speed up everything. <laughs> um, I really love the fact that you can group objects and then drag and drop images into mm -hmm. them, and then it automatically applies all those images on clipping. Um, I think that those are that repeat grid, um, and then the way that the prototypes actually link to actual objects as opposed to just hotspots. I think those were okay. like my three biggest delighters. Um, delighters. And just magical moments where, I, you know, like it, it, I, felt, I found it very intuitive and in that what I was looking for was there. It is very intuitive, so, agreed. Um, I also think the tool is exceptionally well designed um, as like, as software. Yes. So I just pulled up um, a little icon set that I downloaded. It's a free icon set um, and I downloaded it in XD format, so mm -hmm. I can just copy and paste. Kind of wish they were in black, though, but it's okay. We've got a couple questions, um, maybe, for, maybe for some people that are just joining us, what we're working on right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, to give you guys a little recap, um, I am currently redesigning the homepage of the David Sheldrick Wildlife Trust which is an org organization that um, fosters baby elephants that have been orphaned because of poaching or the ivory trade, and they've just been left without a mother to care for them. So this organization takes them in and helps um, get them back to where they need to be, healthy and happy. So um, I'm just currently going down the homepage and putting in all of my sections that I want to have. Awesome. Thanks for joining us, Dima. Have you ever listened to this session while you're at work? Which session? Like at, at Adobe Live. Oh, yes. <clears throat> yes, it's so, I have. It's, I, I find it some of the, the best like white noise to listen to. And sometimes you'll hear somebody share like a, a pro tip or something. And, and you'll, then you pick up it'll, on Yeah, it. it'll like pull yeah. you out of it. And you're like, oh, I got to go try that. Um, yeah, I definitely have. Although when I'm really in work mode, I can't listen to mm. words. So I either have to have like classical music on yep. or like jazz or something with mm -hmm. no words um, because I'm easily distracted. Yeah, I've been doing um, like <clears throat> rain sounds or oh, ocean waves. That's wow. been really good for focus. Yeah, so I'm the same. I can't generally I like to listen to audiobooks. Okay. Um, but I can't do it when I'm problem solving. If right. if I'm just like if I had your wireframes and you know you were like, hey, come in and design this, and it was just kind of as you were saying, like adding aesthetics and putting in images, mm -hmm. I'd probably be able to do that with some yeah some words. But yeah, I, I definitely need focus. Also, if I'm trying to write and I'm listening to something like music, I, impossible. Oh, that is yes, that's definitely impossible. Jason asked Lauren, when you design, do you stick to just one font or do you mix two or have more than two? Uh, it really depends. I've stuck to one font before. I've used, I probably usually don't use more than two. Um, typically I'll have a more, not decorative, but um, a different font for like my H1s and the bigger text. And then I'll have um, a different text for description or subcopy, mm -hmm. something that's easy to read because you don't want some super decorative font in your paragraphs when it's smaller text. Um, I just like when my pages are easily scannable, so I'll have um, nothing too fancy. So here I'm doing the recent news and updates section, which they do have on their website right now, but I'm just gonna clean it up a little bit. And I think currently they have four articles featured, so I'm gonna just stick to that. Um, I'm sure they update it, I'm not sure, once a month or so. So. This will be the image. Oops. I do like to label my wireframes too because 
if I go back and then I forget why I put a square in a certain place, I know the purpose of why I put it there. So it's helpful. And we're about 50 minutes away from our challenge deadline. Oh, okay. So check out the challenge tab, share your music playlist designs with us. Um, and if you're curious about what people submitted before, there's a, a link towards the bottom of the uh, challenge description that says here. And if you click it, it'll uh, pull up all the work in progress right now. So if you feel like you need a little bit of inspiration or you just want to check out what other people are doing, um, have a look. 5-0, Mitch. 5-0 minutes. What? <laughs> he thought I said 15. <laughs> oh, okay. Just like sped up the whole, <laughs> the uh -oh. whole process. No, you got more time than that. <clears throat> So here I'm going to do one bigger featured article with a more blown up picture here. And then below I'm going to do smaller, um, three smaller articles. Yeah, I'm glad somebody sent the link into the website that we're working on, which is the oh, yeah. David Sheldrick mm -hmm. Wildlife Trust, because uh, it's really it's going to be really great just to see the contrast between what you're designing right now and, and mm -hmm. how you're evolving um, their website experience and then kind of what they have today. So yes. It's, it's going to be a really nice contrast. So awesome to see the progress so far. And we're moving fast. Trying. I do have kind of a funny story. Um, so there was a feed on Facebook and it was, I think just kind of explaining how to foster an elephant. And there was a comment in there um, <coughs> from an older woman, I would like to say. And she was wondering uh, when she fostered an elephant, how is she gonna fit it in her backyard? <laughs> It was pretty funny. It was cute. Like she thought that um, you once you foster an elephant, you have to bring it home. So that would be amazing. It would be amazing. Could also be tough on the animal, but uh, yes, that would not be good for the animal. Live, but it would be great for me. I don't have a backyard, so <clears throat> I mean, I could try and stuff them in my bedroom, but I don't. Hey, Lex. Great to see you. Lex has also been a designer on the show. Oh, okay. A wonderful, wonderful guy. He's in the Portland area. I've never been to Portland. Have you? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. It's a fun town. Lots of good food culture. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, a lot of areas in the Pacific Northwest I find um, very appealing, very pretty area. Do you know why it does that? When I um, when I shrunk this text box, it kind of, do you see what it's doing? How it's updating? How it's um, just kind of breaking up the... So it's, it's probably how you created all the text that... I don't it, think the, it is, though, because line when spaces. I... Oh. I've noticed I've noticed different interactions too if I just type out the text and kind of create my own paragraph versus drawing the text box mm -hmm. and then placing the text in. Definitely had different different experiences. Yeah, like I said, you should definitely visit Portland. Okay, I will. <laughs> I have a memory like an elephant. I remember every elephant I ever met. 
Aw. That is very true. They remember everything. I had a really magical moment with an elephant, actually, when I was Did in Chiang Mai. You? Yeah. I would love to hear it. Yeah, so we um, we had a break after we fed them all their nanner, nanner snacks. So they ate all their bananas. Bananas. Okay. And then um, I was lying down on this little um, kind of like thatched roof type of situation. Mm -hmm. And there was an elephant. There was a, a mom. They're all females. So there's um, mother elephants and then there is a baby. And uh, the mother, kind of like the, the matriarch of the group, was kind of near. And I had fallen asleep, and then like I literally looked up, and like her trunk was Aww. like was like touching me, and she was like really next to me, and I was just like, "This is amazing." That's amazing. <laughs> I was like, "I don't know what's going on, but this is amazing." So yeah, it was really really cool, that really is special. Cool. Yeah, I'm planning to visit uh, David Sheldrick hopefully in the near future. So I would love to have an elephant's trunk wrapped around my neck. <laughs> oh yeah, they give you kisses. I yeah. have photos of them giving me kisses. Yeah, they're they, like, so sweet. Go and like suck on your face. It's, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, they do that to the keepers. There's a lot of pictures on the website where the elephants will just have their trunk wrapped around the keeper's neck, and you can tell how thankful they are that mm -hmm. they've been so good to them, and it's it's yeah. really sweet. They're such compassionate animals. Everybody's like, I want an elephant. <laughs> <clears throat> you can get a stuffed animal elephant. Or you can foster an elephant. Yeah, I think somebody was just asking, how does the fostering work? Is it expensive? Um, no, it's not expensive at all. It's the, I think they have a minimum $50. If you just go to the website and click on the foster tab, um, you can select a name. They all have these uh, kind of African names and you can just select a name right on the foster tab and then it will take you to um, where, like the form where you fill out to foster. And I think it's $50. You can donate more if you want, but um, it's a really great gift. I mean, if you don't know what to get somebody for Christmas or one of those random holidays, it's, it's a really great gift. I think I have about 10 or so orphans now that, I've, that I've fostered, yeah. <clears throat> Go you. Go me. That's great. Uh, Lauren, did you use modeling software for your bifold brochure on Behance? Oh, um, I'm trying to think which one that is. Oh, the one for station. Um, no, I did not. I just used Illustrator. Perspective? Like rotate, translate. So I think I just um, used one of those free templates where you can place it on a, a brochure. There's a ton of templates out there that make it super easy. Jan asked, where can I get the smartphone status bar overlay? Uh, there's, there's templates provided, Jan, in XD. Um, there's an iOS template if you're looking for that. I think there's also Android. Um, but yeah, if you open up any of those. Yeah, I can open it right here. Templates. They are all provided for you. Game changers, for sure. There's a lot of really great assets in there that help speed up process. Computer's being a little slow today. Pulling that from the cloud. Like oh, you, so. do you have it in the cloud? No. <clears throat> oh, okay. Connect to that guest network. Okay. If you do want to come, like, let me know, and then I can just switch off while you type in this stuff. There we go. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. So they have. I. You can download this when you go to File, Open. No, wait. Where is it? Get UI Kits. Apple iOS. You just download it from here, and then this is the iPhone eight. Um. Why can't <laughs> My laptop does not like me today. Is well, anyways, it's somewhere in here. It's it's up at the top here. You can use the um, zoom tool. Will that work? Uh, let's see. Oh, okay. Whoop, it's whoop. Oh, letting me do that. Hey, Zach. Thanks for coming in. Great to see you. Saw you on the Twitters. 
today. <clears throat> so how are we doing? How are you feeling about progress overall? I'm feeling pretty good. So I think I have my main outline for the homepage. I got my main sections here. So I'm actually going to, I'm gonna throw in a footer. Okay. And then I'm going to do the mobile app screen for this page. Awesome. That's awesome that you're you're working side by side mm -hmm. in kind of both formats in regards to yeah. responsive. Um, I think that that needs to be part of like everybody's workflow. Oh, um, definitely. Especially today. Mm -hmm. Gabriel's given some suggestions on how to free up some memory, um, like okay. deleting everything in your trash can. Okay. But yeah, I will be, try might that. Might be good to go and just take a look at what's bogging it down performance yeah. wise after. I will do that. <clears throat> I'm just going to grab one of these um, mobile screens here to get started on the mobile part. Actually, I'm going to open a new window and grab. Oh, geez, why did I open something new? <laughs> I never learned my lesson. So while that's I? spinning, I was going to pull up some of the uh, submissions <clears throat> that we've gotten from uh, oh, the Adobe Live playlist. Okay. Just to kind of share a little bit about um, some of the work that some people have been showing for the playlist. Uh, this is awesome, by the way, just in regards to sharing people's oh, work that's and pretty. kind of the whole work I in like progress. Um, so the the prompt today is to do a uh, design for a music playlist. Um, and there's a template provided. You've got about 40, 40 more minutes, 38 more minutes to uh, get your submissions in. So you've got plenty of time. Um, and we're just kind of cycling through some of the examples that some people have shared with us so far. So really amazing just to see not only the, the different, different ways that people are executing, but also um, I think it's fun to share, you know, maybe what music you're actually listening to. You can kind of eject inject a little bit of your own um, personal yeah. aesthetic sense in there. So yeah, let us know what you're uh, listening to. Um, also use this as a great resource just to see what other people are working on, how other people are executing design. Um, really, really looking forward to seeing what everybody's doing. What kind of music do you listen to? It varies. Um, been listening to a lot of Lane 8 right now, which hmm. is like electronic okay. music. Um, really like Lane 8. Um, has, he has some great three hour long playlist on S SoundCloud right now that um, just kind of you don't have to think about, which is really good. Yeah. Odessa, no, I love playlists. Odessa, I'm a big fan of. Okay. A um, couple favorite Spotify playlists are like Folk Indie Chill is a good one. Mm -hmm. Also, there's another one called Brain Something. Brain Focus? Maybe. Brain Power? I think I've listened something. to that one on yeah. Spotify. Those are really good. <clears throat> so what about you? I'm the same way. I mean, it depends on what I'm doing at the moment. Like I said earlier, if I'm designing, I can't listen to anything with words. Mm. <laughs> so I'll just put on one of the focus playlists mm -hmm. on, on Spotify. Um, and then I'm similar. I like some, uh, I, I love country music. <laughs> Um, so I have a lot of country playlists and um, I do like some EDM, mm -hmm. I guess that's what you call it. Deep um, house, chill hop. Yep. Yeah, I listen to country too. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Who's your favorite country artist? Uh, Rhett. What's Thomas Rhett. Thomas Rhett. Yeah, yeah, he's a great one. Good. He actually... Um, has been mixing some of his music with the EDM. Oh, really? Have you heard some of those? <laughs> I'm sure I have. Um, <laughs> They're pretty good, actually. Yeah. You wouldn't think country and EDM go together, but it kind of works. Well, Avicii did that whole kind of like Tennessee mix with, um, what's his name? The Wake Me Up song. And that kind of oh, had a little country okay, flair yeah. to it, for sure. Screens. 
Cedric says trap or hard rock. Trap. <laughs> yeah, trap music just makes my brain do weird things. <laughs> like, I don't know how to describe it. It just like it's like if I were it's like if I were in a, a vibrating elevator. That's what I feel like when I mm. listen to trap. When it like oh, okay. when it drops that that beat, it just makes me feel anxious. Makes me feel kind of badass. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Yeah, box good. Piano classical is good. Mm-hmm. So I'm just gonna follow what I did on the desktop portion of this. Um, I'm gonna shove all the top nav links in the menu bar over here, and then keep the hero up here as well. Oh, and I forgot to add in this hero. I'm gonna have a call to action two calls to action, one for foster and one for donate. So it's just right up at the top. Gabriella says, I like everything but jazz. It sounds like people are practicing their instruments. Oh, I feel like it depends what ja what kind of jazz you listen to because I actually, I've gotten it kind of into jazz. Mm -hmm. Just the more <coughs> mellow kind, not where it's all crazy. <clears throat> yeah, and keep letting us know if you have any more questions for Lauren while she's here. Yeah. There was a question in regards to the um, the ham hamburger icon and kind of the placement of it in regards to the left or right. And if you had any, um, if you had an opinion on the matter, I I actually prefer it on the left, just because um, that's just how I've always done it. That's how my company currently does it too. I I don't think. There's like a huge difference on where, if it goes on the left or the right. What do you think? I, I, I think we're talking about two things here, Gabriel. I think one is like optimizing for ergonomics and reach zones on mobile, which <clears throat> I agree with you. Putting it on the, the right-hand side can make it a more optimal reach zone. Mm. But I think what's important, more important is probably how you establish the, the information ar architecture or the mental model to the user, and so if you're prioritizing left to right navigation and the way that you're stacking that navigation, um, it definitely makes sense, and it's definitely very common to see, you know, whether you label it menu or the hamburger icon in the upper left-hand corner, um, it's a, always a good way to indicate this is coming from, you know, kind of the upper left-hand, which is honestly, when you look at mouse movement and the way people navigate pages, it's most of the time a majority from left to right. Mm -hmm. um, so valid points. Um, I think what would happen and sometimes you need to consider is if there's ever going to be a use case where you have another panel that needs to like a, um, would be a good example. Like if you had filter settings or if there was something mm. else that needed to appear from the right, you would, you would then have to flip that hierarchy if you already prioritize the hamburger icon gotcha. on the right. So definitely, definitely a great question and definitely good things to consider. Absolutely. So you tend to put it on the right. No, I put it on the left. Oh, okay. Um, for sure, but it's but for it's, ergonomics. For ergonomics, it's definitely great to optimize things for reach zones. Okay. Um, I don't know what majority of people are right-handed versus left-handed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and Tim's mentioning thumb reachability. <clears throat> Good point, Gabriel. Oh. 
I also, I did this on accident, but I like how Adobe XD has this where you can just um, resize the text like this instead of going into the, um, the panel over here. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm constantly finding um, little updates and little details that are, mm -hmm. you can tell there's just a lot of intent put behind the, the use cases. Yes. I'd like to know um, the audience's take on pill buttons versus square buttons or rectangle buttons. Because I, I personally like pill buttons. Some people really dislike them. So I don't know. What are your guys' thoughts on that? Some people prefer pill, some people prefer rectangle. Um, Gabriel shared that it depends on the aesthetic of the brand as well. Yes, which I agree that's with. very true. It can definitely be predicated on whether or not it's meant to be fun, playful, mm -hmm. you name it. Also, like if it's rectangle, does it have sharp edges or does it have a pretty generous corner radius? Oh, I'm all about rounded corners. I think it's pretty harsh to have a sharp edge button, but that's just me. But yeah, there's a lot of um, <clears throat> a lot of discussion around brand coming in, which I think is valid. Mm -hmm. I think there was actually a study that I read that rounded corner buttons convert better. <laughs> so. Asked where you found that insight from in regards to performance. You know, I can't <coughs> remember where I read that. I read it a while ago, but um, I'm sure if you look up on Google, you can find several articles about it. But um, I'm sorry, I can't remember where I read that. But Google can help you with anything. So Roxanne asked to share um, some of the side notes that you've been working on or kind of your reference that you have as part of your process? Um, like the this, this mocks that you have? She, oh. I think she was just curious oh, to see, see like what, you're, what you're referring to. Yeah. yeah, so, I mean, just to prepare before um, I jumped in here, I laid out some of my ideas on a piece of paper. Um, they aren't sketches because I'm not a big sketcher, but um, I just printed out a couple mock-ups that I did before this just to reference um, because I did think a little bit about it before I came here and that's just what I'm looking at on the screen. Yeah. <laughs> it's fairly it's fairly common for um, anybody that's kind of coming into Adobe Live to kind of think about some of the things that they've thought about before, especially because we want to make sure that we're adding a lot of value to the session and we're sharing a lot with the community. Um, so I, you know, even for me personally, when I've um, kind of been in the same seat as Lauren, sometimes I'll think about things ahead of time. Um, sometimes it's just, it's, it's wayfinding. It's not necessarily doing complete designs. It can just be, um, if I find myself getting lost or if I get caught up on camera or I start feeling nervous, yeah. which everybody experiences up here, um, you kind of want to be able to ground yourself and pull yourself back into your work. Um, sometimes that can be sketches, sometimes that can be mocks, um, but yeah. Yep. I think I would be much more nervous if I came up here and didn't have anything, so I wanted to feel a little bit prepared. I've done that before. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, how did I that go? I did it go? for the XD Daily Challenge okay. on uh, one of the submissions. 
Um, but yeah, it, it was it was for a watch design for a weather app, and I didn't. I I, di I did think about it, and I did <clears throat> prep, but I hadn't I hadn't arrived at a solution. So I literally okay. came in and in twenty minutes tried to just see where I could arrive. But it was pretty <laughs> it was pretty nerve wracking. I can imagine. Yeah, you definitely get a lot of feels on this side of the camera from nervousness to adrenaline to mm -hmm. excitement to panic. <laughs> you hit like the full spectrum. Yeah. So, um, and Gabriel says you're doing great. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's definitely a lot tougher um, trying to talk at the same time when I'm designing because I'm not a very good multitasker, so. Just took me <laughs> way too long to do that. Yep. Kevin asked, how do you learn about UI patterns and UX patterns? How do I learn about UI patterns and UX patterns? Um, honestly, I just look at inspiration and browse a lot of articles to get ideas and just even playing around um, with your designs, you learn a lot and you learn what works, what doesn't work. Um, I would say those are the main things that I do. Yeah, <clears throat> and if you wanna get more specific, just go and read the material <laughs> guidelines and Apple's mm -hmm. HIG. Um, those are really, really great resources to not only learn about how those products or platforms implement design, but also just design in general, because they'll sometimes explain rationale behind, Yes. Um, you know, why closeout buttons are designed a certain way and things like that. Some people said they're nervous even chatting. Really? <laughs> Don't be nervous. I think I'm much more nervous than you up here. No, it's everybody said you're doing great. And oh, it's really amazing just to see thank um, you. the progress. And oh. thank you for sharing. Yeah, of course. Also something that you're passionate about. I think it's really great to, the way that you've been able to share a little bit about yeah. yourself and what you're excited about. And um, yeah, it's great. Thank you. I'm excited to, um, when I get to the UI part, to pick the photos for this, all of these pages, because it's a difficult decision. There's a lot of cute ones out there, but I'm very excited for that. And there's 20 minutes left for our challenge deadline. So make sure to check out the challenge tab, download the template, and share your ideas about a music playlist. For the button under the newest orphan arrival, I'm going to put foster me so that it makes it a little more personal. Mm because on their current website, I don't, I don't think they have that, but I thought that was kind of a nice touch. Do you, <clears throat> do you often work copy and tone into your work or is that something that's provided for you and, and on your team per se? On like, my team that's provided, we have a content team. Awesome. Um, I, I probably wouldn't be the best at coming up with content to be honest, but it's nice to have a team to do it for you. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, I share. I share that. I'm. I've found myself actually being very terrible at copy, <laughs> like almost to the point where it's just like pedantic. It's just like dry. Yeah. Because I'm trying to articulate something. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a muscle I've been trying to grow this year. Oh, good. By um, yeah, like reading other people's products and other websites, just mm -hmm. seeing how they kind of. I found like getting into character. Okay. Has been really helpful to not think of it as how you would write it, but to try to like right. adopt a persona. Um, but yeah, it's been a huge challenge. <laughs> I yeah, I bet it has. It's been. very hard. Yeah. Writing great copy. I love when um, companies have a fun tone, though. Yeah. You know, Absolutely. like when it's not so serious. 
Yeah, when I was working at Atlassian, which is where I was previously, mm -hmm. we had content writers, technical writers, and people that would come and help um, kind of guide those experiences. And also, um, we had really great principles to fall back on, like being bold or optimistic towards the customer. Oh, okay. And that, that type of, those types of principles helped guide, you know, where the, the copy and tone should kind of, mm -hmm. kind of fall in. Carlos says he makes it a point to never write copy. <laughs> I agree on that one. Gabriel says it's all about pushing and persuading people to do one specific task. Mm. I mean, I, I see what you're saying, Gabriel, but I'd also respectfully like disagree in the sense that I think it's it honestly is about aligning what the customer goals are to the outcome. Um, if there's persuasion, which I understand how that works in a product sense, I can I can understand how that could help drive metrics. But really, what you would want to do is is align to customer expectations and fulfill their their values through what you want to achieve in the product experience. Okay, we've gotten a good start here on the mobile homepage. Um, this will be pretty easy because I'm just copying what I have uh, from the desktop version. Yeah, that's <clears throat> that's honestly like it. It sounds like a lot of work when you're going from desktop to mobile, but um, you know, as you've been kind of laying everything out on a grid, you've kind of helped speed up your process a little bit by just being able to transfer over content. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how it, that's how it should be. Yeah, do you usually start from mobile mockups or do you do desktop to mobile? No, I start I, I start from desktop for sure. I mean, depending on what the the goal is, but I try to always work within 359 pixels. So I'll do like shapes that are that size. You, oh, okay. you do 359 because some mobile screens are 375 pixels. Oh. And if you do an, an even number, uh, you actually get uneven pixel alignment on like the margins. So if you do 359, then you can get like equal equidistant pixels on each side. Gotcha. And stuff. That's very smart of you. <laughs> but yeah, if you try to work within like 350 or 440 is a good pixel size to work. It just depends on the content and how you want it to translate. Mm -hmm. So you don't design for, what is the smallest size? 320 mobile? Wait, is that like a baby phone? <laughs> Like, it's a phone for babies. Um, like a, no, I like think it's the, I think it's the iPhone five. Mm. Yeah, no, I, I haven't. I haven't. I mean, uh, I don't think I've gone smaller. Do people three. still design for iPhone fives? I'm curious. I think five C is the last one that you kind of can design for in actual Xcode. Um, okay. But I don't. I don't know. Yeah, didn't didn't you know there's phone for babies now? I'm I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Kevin. It's great to have you here. It's like a Zoolander quote. It's, like it's a phone for babies. <laughs> Center for ants. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm just currently mocking up the media gallery that. Um, I want to be in this section and I'm going to include an icon to place a video here as well. So, there's my icons. Hmm. What's the shortcut for um, circle? Is it not O? Uh, hmm. C. C. Oh, well. No. Yeah. Um, I don't think it was C. L E. Oh, it's E. E. That was my next guess. Kevin asks, <clears throat> how do you choose sizes for elements like buttons, type, etc.? Do you have specific guidelines for the web as reference? For the web, not for mobile, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Um, 
typically I do a button. Um, I mean, it also depends on the brand. Like some brands have really big buttons and then some have smaller buttons, but I probably stay around, let's see, the height of this one is 80. Um, but this is also on a big 1920 screen. Um, so it, it depends on the breakpoints too. Mm -hmm. But if we're talking about the 1920 screen, I would say height around 80, maybe a little bit less than that. I don't know if that helps you. <laughs> yeah, I, I think, you know, it, it can vary, right? Yes. Depending on, again, like the brand and the aesthetic. I mean, some brands just use like a link for buttons. Mm -hmm. So. Hey, Danielle from Peru. Thanks for joining us. We're here with Lauren Waters and she's been designing the new landing page and mobile experience for the David Sheldrick Wildlife Trust. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lindsay says, I like big buttons and I cannot lie. Uh, <laughs> that's really great. We got, a, we got a great community this morning. Hey, lots, you guys are funny lots today. Lots of jokes. <clears throat> Jan asked, how can I change the font of all text in an XD document at once. Change the font of all text. Um, well, of literally all the text, you can select like this and then change it. Mm -hmm. um, you can also create styles over here, which yep. I'll do when I start the UI, but um, there's character styles over here, so like if I if I click on this guy right here, Media Gallery, and then I add it to my character styles, it'll come up right here and then you can, um, pretty sure like every time you use this size, it'll link them all. And then if you wanna change it, it'll change all of them, yep. so. Yeah, so you can do that in the assets and you'll just create mm -hmm. a new um, character, character style. style. Sometimes uh, if I forget to do that, I'll just select, um, well, if I haven't gotten too much into the process, I'll just select the ones and then link them if I forget to a character style. <clears throat> awesome. Hello. Do we have a prize for the challenge winner today? It is? Okay. Okay, great. Okay, and so um, we still want to go through some designs as well. Yeah. Okay. Go awesome. Cool. Sounds great. Eleven minutes twenty seconds. Indeed. Do you find it hard when you're doing wireframes not to start picking sizes for things and getting into the UI? I find it very difficult. You mean like actual dimensions of things? Well, just, just getting into the more mm. detail of the design when you're just trying to get what you want on the page. Like sometimes I'll be picking out sizes too much and... Um, yeah, totally. Or like adding images and just making yeah. it a little bit more in context, I think is yeah. something I, I struggle with. I think it depends too, you know, if like who the audience is, you know, if this is something you're trying to share with a client, then the less context, oh, yes. the better you can close at a decision. That way people mm -hmm. don't fixate on colors and photos and stuff. Yeah, at my, at my job, we accidentally made the mistake of putting our buttons a certain color in the wireframe just to show where the call to actions were. And that's all they could focus on was yeah. the color of the button. <clears throat> and we're like, no, don't focus on that. Just look at the overall design of it. But it happens. T 
Chemo, your design was submitted. I've got it in here. It's labeled Kamikaze up at the top. <laughs> also, if you if anybody's curious to kind of see the examples of work, <clears throat> just click into the challenge tab, which is in your uh, chat column that you're chatting with everybody right now. And just scroll down to the bottom. There's a, a link that says here and it'll open up the um, work in progress so everybody can check it out. And we've got less than 10 minutes remaining for the challenge. Ooh, I can't wait to see them all. So actually, I'm going to make this just to show you guys. You can make this a symbol too, and then you can reuse this whole element here um, wherever you want on your other mockups. Awesome. Yeah, especially if you have like similar, similar content. Yep. Yeah, and I'm try as I'm designing these, um, or when I was thinking about it before, I wanted to use similar components on pages just to make it easier mm -hmm. um, and also look cohesive when it is finally ready to go. Yeah, it's a really great way to speed up your process. Mm -hmm. um, especially, you know, if, if you're trying to think of content in a way as um, additional context for the screen. It, they may not all need to be independently designed differently or unique, right? They could all yeah. have similar. Mm -hmm. It also helps when it comes to implementation. You know, when you think about an engineer or, or someone right. having to go and build this, you know, they can create it as a component so yes. that it's reusable. So really, really great pro tip. Yeah, redesigning um, the online banking platform that I currently work for. They use Sitecore. And so um, my design team and I built out probably 20 or so components just to be reused everywhere. And then it made it easier for the developers just to pull those components on each page because there were a lot of pages that they had to put together. So if I can make their life easier, it's better to do it that way. Absolutely. Hey, Arthur, thanks for joining us. Milan, thanks for sharing so much and chatting with us in here. It's been really great to have you. I'm going to add in my bottom nav here. Actually, I can probably pull one from the UI kit, right? Oh, I don't want to try to open another thing. <laughs> How you doing so far? Feeling good? I feel pretty good. Yeah, so far we have the home page and now the mobile home page done, wireframed out. Crazy. So that's a long page. What's the total pixel length? It's like in the 3,000. 5,000. 5, yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Scroll for days. <laughs> <clears throat> 
All right, so next I'm going to start. How much time do we have? We've got less than five minutes remaining for the challenge. Okay. And then we still have about a half hour left in the okay. 25 minutes in the whole segment. And thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, those of you that are chatting and sharing, asking great questions, um, I'm sure Lauren really appreciates, appreciates it. I do. Um, so yeah, keep them coming. Thanks again for being here. Um, we do have uh, another session coming up after us. I think that's the final one of the day. Uh, maybe we can share just the, um, yep, that magic. So yeah, we've got Josh. I've seen Josh just behind in the studio with Michael Chase coming up next. So thanks everybody for hanging out with us. Do make sure to tune in for the next one. We'll also be selecting the winner for the uh, challenge. So the next page I'm going to do is the Orphan bio page, just um, to tell the user a little bit about the personality of this orphan, their story, um, just so they can get to know them. And if they connect with their story, then they can foster them. So again, I'm just pulling the same component that I did for the home page, the top, um, what, hero component. Um, and I'm just, I just dragged it over to this page. So the first component will be my rescue, and it just gives a brief overview of how they were found um, and then how they were brought back to the foundation to be treated. Hey, Austin, thanks for joining us from Hawaii. Ooh, Hawaii. I was just there a couple months ago. Really? Yes, in Maui. That's awesome. For it's a great place for my honeymoon. <laughs> That's right. You were just recently married. I was. Congratulations. Thank you. That's wonderful. Did you guys have a good time? We had a great time. Yeah. I've never been to Hawaii. Really? Never. Wow. You got to get out there. Austin lives there, so he knows oh, okay. something I don't know. <laughs> And we're less than a minute away for your submissions. Also, I saw a couple notes about people being nervous. Um, totally, totally understand it. Um, really happy that you're participating anyways. Um, it's gonna be a great opportunity to share your work and to get some visibility, but also get inspired by others. So um, even if you are a little bit nervous, just share it anyways. Yeah, why not? How are you feeling about progress? I'm feeling pretty good. Um, I know we have like 10 seconds here, but I've started on the next section. So feeling, feeling okay. good. Okay, awesome. So just before we get into the challenge and look at some of the work, why don't you just walk <laughs> us through a little bit about okay. um, what you approached today, um, what inspired you to kind of do this, and then just share a little bit about your process and just kind of how you approached it just for anybody that's just joining us. Okay. So um, to start off, I, I am redesigning the David Sheldrick Wildlife Trust uh, website. And I started with the home page on desktop. I used a 1920 width um, canvas. And um, 
I was looking at my notes. I kind of thought about what I was going to do before, but I really wanted to feature um, just a easy way to uh, adopt an orphan and also um, this should say donate. Actually, yes, I didn't change those. Foster and orphan and donate. Just so those are up front because on the current website, you have to dig a little bit to find them. So I wanted that to be front and center and then just um, having information on the homepage for users to get to know what this organization does. So their mission here and featuring their newest orphan arrival and a little photo gallery down here and recent news and updates. Awesome. So that's what I did on the homepage. And then I just um, transitioned that to the mobile view. So I just used the same elements that I used on the desktop and then converted it to mobile. Awesome. And then I, I just started on the orphan bio page, but still working on that. Yeah, no, it's uh, honestly like great progress today. It's Thank been you. really wonderful just to see your process and how you think about wireframing. Also the fact that you're, you're willing to you know, understand like, hey, I'm, I'm, I don't want to go straight into sketching. I'm just going to kind of jump directly into wireframes, which mm -hmm. I think is totally appropriate, especially in a tool like XD. I think that that's that really, makes it so easy. It's really empowering because of the interchangeable assets. The fact that you know content containers or your boxes can eventually be easily translated into images later on. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's it's been great. Uh, really, really impressive work. Thank just you. to see how quickly you've been able to move through everything. So thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. Also sharing yes. something you're passionate about, yes. which is uh, elephants mm -hmm. and their adoption. Cool. So we're going to swing over to the Adobe Live work in progress and just check out a couple of the submissions from everybody today. Um, I see we've got Michael Chase. I think he was the first submission. Um, and so what we'll do is we'll just kind of carous carousel through some of these images. Uh, okay. Honestly, if you have feedback or if there's anything you'd like to share, anything you'd like to see um, that you'd like to comment on aesthetically, I'm sure anybody and everybody would appreciate any or okay. all feedback that you have. Wow, they all look really nice so far. So I'm gonna let it kind of scroll through and if you see something you'd like to stop on, um, just let me know. The, everybody's colors are really nice on all of these. I like this one, it kind of makes me feel calm and um, I'm wondering what the playlist would be for this, what kind of music it would be. Very clean, black and white. Oh, it's very colorful. Say more. <laughs> uh, no, I really like all these, it looks like um, you can scroll through. It's super simple to see all of the songs. Um, I really like the little background image in those. It adds kind of a cool touch to it. This is really nice too. I like how you all picked kind of calming colors. Mm -hmm. Some warm and cool here yeah. with the gradients. Oh, wow. This, this one, one kind of reminds me of Spotify a little bit with the green. Yep, I think that, the, yeah, we've got a Spotify link in here. Oh, so okay. maybe they're taking an approach on redesigning it. Very cool. Nice submission, Timo. This one's nice. They're all very clean. It seems like they'd all be very easy to scroll through. What do you think, I mean, in, in redesigning a music playlist, what are, what are some things that you think would be important or things that maybe you would prioritize for your design? <clears throat> I mean, I would definitely use a standard layout for a music player. You don't want to reinvent the wheel, the wheel right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, having that bottom play bar at the bottom is great. It looks like everybody kind of did that. And then just having it easy to scroll through. Um, and then if you could click on the actual song, that would be great if it took you to kind of a detail page or like related songs or something about the artist would be cool. Mm -hmm. And I think I think the work that everybody's doing right now is going to build throughout the oh, okay. next two to three days. So I think they'll kind of be connecting this to other experiences. But um, yeah, I agree with you 100%, kind of taking established known paradigms mm -hmm. like a list view 
Yes. And just using that. And, you know, that's, I think you're touching on something that's really important for a design, which means not everything has to be innovative or a complete reinvention. Sometimes mm -hmm. you can take existing paradigms. I'm mm. all about that. I don't like reinventing the wheel because if someone's used to a specific pattern for an app or a product, I don't see why you, you would um, redo that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 100%. Really, really great feedback from Lauren. Anything else you'd like to add? Um, I mean, these all look so great so far. I'm excited to see where else these, where else this awesome. goes. Yeah. Yeah, really, really great work. Um, this this one, Kiara, I, really, really nice job. That's really nice. Um, I think I'm I'm mainly gravitating to the way that you incorporated kind of these sound waves up in the up in the header. I think it it's just a, a really fun, playful playful addition. Um, That's really funny because I was actually thinking about incorporating some of those organic shapes in my design. Oh, awesome. So <laughs> you guys are you've got the All mental the alignment page. going. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, just hold like that? Yeah. It's kind of, I was looking for a pause button because it just kept on shuffling. <laughs> but yeah, sorry if that was confusing for anybody. Um, no, Kiara, really nice job. Uh, really great use of color palette. Mm -hmm. Really like the large avatars. Um, I think one thing maybe is, you know, just your overall density on the screen um, in regards to how many things you're showing the mm. list view. Maybe something you could work in in another iteration, um, but Really, really nice execution. Yeah, I like the drop shadow on the play button too. Looks nice. So, Muhammad's got a really nice clean submission here. Mm -hmm. Like the um, tab navigation up at the top. Oh yeah, I didn't even see that. So. I like how it fades too at the bottom, but maybe just bringing the fade a little bit lower so you can see more. Yeah, so everybody, thank you so much for sharing. Uh, thanks for being a part of the process, honestly, with us and sharing your work. It's really great to see uh, just everybody's different approaches and different aesthetic values that they bring. So really, really nice job. Um, we will be picking a winner at the end of the segment. So thank you so much. Um, so if you didn't get a chance to submit, you can definitely hold on to the next segment and then submit your work, um, especially if you like to spend a little bit more time on it. Oh, you got a emo couple emojis there. Oh, I love emojis. <laughs> awesome. Alrighty, so. We still so, got some time. Okay. Um, we can definitely use this time to talk about some next steps and what you're th what you're excited about tomorrow, just so we can kind of give everybody a little bit of hint mm -hmm. about what you're going to be working on. Um, also, if you want to continue to do some work and you still have some things you want to work out, okay, um, happy to do that. We can turn it over to the community for asking some more questions. Um, so we've got about maybe 20 more minutes to go. Okay. Well, I'm gonna do a little bit more work on this page and hopefully get this page done and then we can use the last 10 minutes to talk about what I'm going to do tomorrow Perfect. or the rest of the time. That sounds awesome. Okay. Great. So if you guys have any other questions for me while I'm continuing on this page, um, happy to answer. And stick around. We've got another uh, <laughs> segment coming up after us. Michael, Ch Michael Chase is going to be hosting and um, yeah, one more person for the day. So stick around. Should be great. I think it was Josh Iwata who's joining us. Yep. <clears throat> I love to see the community kind of telling everybody else great work. I know, um, so It's really, cool. really awesome. I think it's really invaluable to be able to share your work and also get feedback from Absolutely. You know, it's definitely very people. encouraging. This page is actually pretty simple. I'm, I'm gonna include later on um, a couple facts about the orphan up here in the hero. But for now, I'm just gonna lay out the other components. So again, I'm gonna use the same photo gallery component. So Austin um, asked an earlier question. <clears throat> How much time do you spend on wireframing versus mockups? You know, it. that is also, um, it depends on the project. Um, I usually spend a good amount of time wireframing just so I can make sure I get all my ideas out there and um, think about all the transitions from each page, 
and what uh, little micro elements I want in there. And then um, I still spend a good amount of time on UI though, mm -hmm. just to make sure it looks polished and clean and um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if I have a certain time on how much I spend on wireframing, but I take, I like to take my time definitely on it to make sure that it all makes sense and that I didn't miss anything. Um, I think that's really important before jumping into the actual design of it. Great answer. Actually done with that page now. <laughs> awesome. You think I should start on the mobile version of this page? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. We've got the time. Why not? And you're definitely working fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> Just kind of mowing through these. Well, it's I mean, amazing. I did have a good amount to do, so I'm trying to stay on track here. Anybody else have any questions for Lauren Waters while we're here? Also, Tim, thanks for sharing Lauren's website and um, oh. her work on Behance. It's really cool. Yeah, if it's a little confusing, I my name is Lauren Waters, but on some of my uh, websites, it's still Lauren Meese because I'm trying to transition all the way over to Lauren Waters after being married. So you can either find me under Lauren Meese or Lauren Waters. So. Yeah, we were talking about that beforehand, um, after getting married, you know, all these things you'd have to update. It's a lot to update. I mean, I got to buy a new domain, um, transition my current site over to that, so. Megan, the maiden name is Meese, and it's M-E-A-S-E? M-E-A-S-E, -E, yep. What is the most critical skill to have as a UX designer in the next five years? Oh, that's a loaded question. Um, I don't even know how to answer that question. <laughs> Putting me on the spot. Um, I would say, I would say really, um, I would say all of the skills you need to have. I mean, there's not a certain one that I feel like takes precedence over the others. I think having um, the research part down and the wireframing down, um, if you're relating it to UX, those are the two most important things. But um, to me, it's all important because it all um, overlaps. Mm. And I think I just did a terrible job at answering no, that no, question. Totally. Darren, I'm curious to, I'm curious to hear what you think. I think it's a really, really great question. Yeah. Um, I'll just jump on to Lauren's answer. I think all the things is absolutely a, an appropriate answer. I think one thing that might be a little bit controversial is actually getting into coding. Mm. And yeah. I think, um, you know, CSS and HTML and some of those things are going to continue continually evolve with other great products out there like Webflow and anything else that allows you to build websites really, really quickly. But yeah, I think getting into into either understanding Swift or React or other coding languages um, are just going to be vastly beneficial. Research is also um, a great, great skill to grow, which, yes. which you, you definitely uh, focused on. I would also say just um, keeping up with the trends of UX and reading a lot of articles, um, watching tutorials, just to stay current, mm -hmm. you know, because it's <clears throat> there's always something new. Um, and that's what's so exciting about being in this industry, but definitely keeping up to date because you don't want to design something that is um, 10 years old or, you know, yeah. you don't want to be that person. I think Zach, <laughs> Zach 
summed that up really nicely, which was just practicing your craft or mastering your craft yeah, every day. Yeah, I mean, practice. Yeah. 100%. Definitely. Yeah, it sounds like through getting into visual design and UX design, would you would you say you kind of reinvented yourself? Because I've noticed that's also a pretty common trend for people that it kind is. of pick out a career. Um, I, I went through one myself, so. I wouldn't say I reinvented myself. I think, um, I think it's kind of, well, like you said, it's a common path for visual designers to head in that direction because I still do visual, mm -hmm. a lot of visual design. Um, I just found that having a purpose behind what I'm designing, the UX part made it a lot more interesting. Yeah. So I think it's kind of inevitable not to eventually convert for or combine visual design with UX design. Um, just because if you're working on any project, you're, you have overlap there, so. Yeah, I think, um, <laughs> I think Carlos or somebody touched on something really important also in, in the way of kind of like empathy. Mm -hmm. But just to go beyond that, I think soft skills is something hugely important. You know, I, some of the people in the community are talking about working with your clients and how to how to work and design for your clients. But I think building on soft skills like being candid and listening and being authentic they may sound like really really simple things mm -hmm. but i think just being a great person to work with and being someone that um is very very authentic and a great communicator i think those skills are really really great skills to grow that don't necessarily live in our tool sets as designers in the sense of um, technical skills um, but absolutely something something worth yeah, working on totally communication agree. responsiveness like how quickly you respond to emails and how active you are those are all really really great things to work on mm -hmm. ah jason said that thanks jason hey michael <clears throat> Yeah, Arthur shared that he's like he was able to land his new job just based off of client facing skills. Oh, awesome. Really great question, Oscar. Thank you. So something fun that I wanted to add in the mobile app was um, in the orphan bio page, I wanted to add personality characteristics or personality traits section, because um, if you read about them, they, they each have their own distinct little personality. <laughs> like some of them are um, troublemakers, some of them are sassy, mm. some of them are um, very you know just very strong and motherly and so it's really fun to see what each one um what kind of characteristics they have so i thought that would be a fun element to include that's that's awesome the sassy ones yeah. are my favorite <laughs> i think the baby that i met was fairly timid oh. a little little bashful for sure uh, oscar asked if we know about atomic design or design based in components Atomic design. I'm not very familiar with atomic design. Yeah, so, uh, atomic design was a phrase coined by a designer from Yahoo a few years ago. I've and, heard of it, yeah. yeah and it, it's basically about, you know, thinking about components or um, experiences down to their atomic level, which can be as small as a button mm, or right. a link. Um, right. And so um, I'm not really sure what the question is, but I guess just in general, if you've heard about it, um, Based on, based on the components and the way that you were thinking about, yeah, it was Brad Frost um, reusing things in a way that's scalable, right? Which is really a really yes. efficient way to work fast. Yeah, that's something maybe I should um, educate myself on more. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of. It sounds like you're doing a little platform work yourself. Would you classify that as a design system? Because I know you mentioned earlier you used. A design system but is, um, is platform like at my current job mm -hmm. yes 
Yeah, we definitely, um, we came up with our own design system, which was really cool. So we had to really think about um, the purpose of each element and the rules around mm -hmm. each element, <coughs> which it's, um, it's definitely tough, but it's a good, it's a good exercise to do because you really have to think about um, why you're placing a certain element on a page. Um, because when we handed off this design system to our development team, we had to give them all the rules around each um, mm. element, and it's a good, it's a good exercise. Any any like great learnings or anything come out of that experience for you that you'd like to share with the community? Um, I would say it definitely helped me designing going forward with that because I always had in the back of my mind that I need to kind of map out the elements that I'm using. And um, I think for our whole team, it was so beneficial because each designer on my team has a, a certain feature that they work on mm -hmm. for the platform. And, you know, as designers, we put our own spin on design. So it really helped us stay cohesive and follow patterns and it, it looked like the same designer designed the end product and not, you know, having different designers on each feature, which was really great. Yeah. So awesome. <clears throat> Alrighty, so we're gonna be wrapping up in about the next three minutes. Okay. So if you have any questions for Lauren, please share them. Um, You've been doing an awesome job just moving through all these wireframes. So thank you so much for sharing your process. Of course. And uh, definitely sharing something you're passionate about. Uh, what do you have in store for us over the next couple days? Yeah, so um, I have completed the homepage and the mobile version of the homepage, the orphan bio page, and almost done with the mobile version of that page. So tomorrow I'm gonna continue working on my wireframes and um, hopefully start on some UI for the wireframes awesome. tomorrow too. That's great. Yeah. Okay. I think we just answered your question, Kiara. <laughs> so that's awesome. Yeah. Great. I'm excited. This has been fun so far. Hopefully you guys find this beneficial to watch. Andre asked, do you add animations on your UI designs? I always think about that. Um, you know, a really good website for that is, oh, my internet's not working, <laughs> but uimovement.com. And um, they have, I mean, you can just browse through all the interactions there, but I really love um, adding little, little micro interactions just to make the UI a little bit more fun and fun to interact with. So I think that's a great, thing to add into your designs. Totally. So what, what point would you do that in the process? Do you think that that's something you would find appropriate now? Or is that something that maybe you would do in the middle or, or the um, end? How would you prioritize that? I would probably do it when I'm starting to look at the UI mm -hmm. of it, because then I can see how everything's going to lay out and be like, oh, well, I think this gradient button needs a little bounce when you push it or um, uh, yeah, when I start the UI. Awesome. So. Cool. All right, everybody. We're going to start wrapping it up. Uh, we're going to get ready for our next segment, which Michael Chase will be hosting with Joshua Wata. So thank you so much for joining us. Please, a huge round of applause for Miss Lauren thank you. Waters. Thank you so much for sharing your process. I'm really looking forward to the next couple of days. Me it's too. gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, thanks for all the great questions, everybody in the community. You guys were awesome today. Thanks for the jokes. Um, <laughs> please stick around and uh, also make sure to get in your submissions for the challenge in case you wanna continue to participate and win. So thank you, everybody. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs>